wanted to make a, a comment off of that is that I was the same way at first. Like, well, I, while I was reading the book, I was waiting for that really big climax. You guys are all thing. sickos. But, <laughs> but when, when, you, when I got to that point, like, we know it's towards the end and whatnot, and so I knew that it was coming, but when you, when you said what that inmate said to you, before you even said, I'm done, in the book, there, there were tears in my eyes going, no, no, we're done, this is over, we're done, it's, that's enough. And it just hit me. It's pretty scary. <laughs> I mean, it really is. And I say in the book, all these years, I want to, you know, you got to understand that I was this little kid that was raised on rock and roll. There was no internet. There was no videos. There was none of that stuff. No cassettes when I was a kid. Yeah, there was only three channels. And so I was raised. You had to get up to change them, right? I had to get up to change them. Because my mom would yell at me, get over there and change the TV set. I'd be, I'm the channel switcher. I'm the remote. That's true. I never thought about that. I was the remote. So, you know, growing up for me, I didn't have a lot of options what to do and watch and stuff. So playing music was the only option that I really had. And it just gave me a lot of hope. So it's just, it's crazy when, you know, I think about, I wanted to be this big famous guy and I was this big famous guy in prison. That was kind of, it was humbling and really scary. So, you know, that to me was the big moment. I, you know, thank God I was in the middle of a lockdown. Close. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I thought the climactic part in the book was when you got left that's what I was thinking. <laughs> That's the one I was thinking when I couldn't smell any air. I just had to go get my picks. I mean, geez, that's pretty crazy. But again, that tells me what freedom is all about. I was a good kid growing up. I was little beaver cleaver. I never was involved in drugs, gangs, fights. Always tried to do the best that I could because I wanted to be a rock star since I was 10 years old. That was my ultimate goal and dream. So I wanted to work hard to get that. Never thought about anything else. So, you know, had goals and dreams as a little kid. That's what I find now that these kids don't have. There's no goals and dreams as kids. You guys all got goals and dreams because you're going to college. You know what you want to do. Yes, sir. Um, I just wanted to make a comment. My, my Probably just my most, like, Enlightening moment in the book for me was probably when uh, you were uh, working with the kids, and one of one of the, a girl came up to you, approached you, and mentioned mm. or asked you if you could say hi to her father yeah. in prison. And right. then later, or she said you, she asked you to say uh, like she, she forgives him. Yeah, and you just tell him that I forgive him for molesting, molesting my sister and me. And uh, just like learning in the course and just over the semester, just how juveniles actually tend like some tend to do that like forgive for like these heinous crimes it's through that just really hit me just hearing that in the book from what you heard so. it's you know i talked to my buddies back in michigan quite a bit because what's going on with myself with the movie and the book again and then talking to college kids it's like this whole thing is a gift and, a, and really humbling to me to be here talking to all of you ladies and gentlemen this i don't take this lightly and it's just you know it's just the craziest thing for me to do this. And how we can change people's lives just by a little bit. So, so thanks, you know, it, it just, it's, it's just really humbling how we can do this. I really thank you for the question.